Welcome to Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Thank you so much for joining me again. We're going to take a look at the AV2000 Sharp Classroom Player that we picked up recently. So thanks for following along with our shows this week. Super excited to share this with you in the journey that has already been this interesting little unit and I'm going to tell you all about it. We're going to try to uh, play some tapes on it and all that good stuff. However, really quickly before I do that, I wanted just to thank you guys so much. I went through the co a lot of comments today. I've been behind on doing comments and I was just struck by how awesome so many of you are. So many encouraging and, and truly nice comments that mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate uh, the kind words and just you guys being there, taking time. I know that it's busy. Uh, a day is busy for most people and you know trying to find five minutes to watch a YouTube video or 10 minutes can be tricky so I just want to say thank you you guys are awesome and I very very much appreciate you okay so we're gonna take a look at this guy right here it is a sharp um, AB 2000 this was the Aurora Public School one of the Denver area school districts uh, property so federal government property here it is a suitcase design it's probably the biggest and clunkiest and unsexiest looking cassette players of all time, but that's what makes it interesting to me. So you can, uh, it's got a handle on top, you can carry it around, and it's that same kind of hardened, almost like a Bakelite plastic that you see on a lot of classroom record players. It's got metal hinges and, or latches and corners, and there's rubber feet on this side, as well as the bottom depending on which way you're looking at it. Let's take a look at this label here. So you can see Sharp AV2000 tape recorder, 120 volts, 60 hertz, 20 watts. And there's a serial number made in Japan. And I can tell you having, oh, by the way, well, I've got it. It's a, it's a beast. Take a look at this speaker grill back here. Uh, somebody stabbed it with a pencil probably. So that'll be interesting. But anyway, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, when I did have this thing open, and I'm gonna show you that in a little bit, inside I did notice that everything was Sharp brand. So it truly is a Sharp device, which is good. So here it is. Um, again, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. I didn't know this existed until I you know, came across it in the store. But it kinda of looks like a shoe bo or, uh, yeah, shoebox uh, cassette player with this you know, heavy plinth. And this is metal. This is uh, like a plywood wrapped in vinyl. So literally constructed in the same manner as a classroom record player. This is AC powered, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in for you here. And uh, what I found out when I first powered this up is that there, there was no, it was fast forwarding and it was rewinding, but I couldn't, you know, I, when I hit play, nothing happened. And I was like, oh boy, here we go again. You know, does it need belts? You know, what's going on? And I took a look inside, and the, it's hard to see right there, but the pinch roller, was gummed up with some fuzz. So there was an easy fix. I just defuzzed it and all of a sudden it was playing. And it was great. I still haven't cleaned the heads on this. Actually, I need to do that. It'll probably brighten the sound a little bit, but I noticed I wasn't getting any audio. And I'm like, what the heck? And I did some research and some people are like, that's not a speaker back there. You have to plug in either a speaker through this, you know, jack right here or, you know, a headset. So I plugged it into an external uh, head or I plugged in headphones and it worked sounded good so I knew that you know the mechanism the amplification the caps were probably fine but that the speaker just had issues so I did open it up and it was probably the easiest service that I've ever been able to render to any device it was so easy even I was able to fix the problem so the problem being no sound coming from up there so I'm gonna cut to some video I shot the other day um, all I had to do was remove these six screws. Well, I guess eight screws because there's two in here. And that was it. So I'm going to go to that now. And then once we get back from seeing those clips, we'll test it out. Okay, so looks like this has a wooden box, which is pretty interesting. But I've got to take this whole piece off. Okay. Because that guy right there, I think, has been stabbed. Oh, look, it's not even connected. Okay, I'm gonna have to investigate further. So the speaker actually just looks like it's disconnected. But interesting, look at this very uh, old school 
circuit board. I was going to say PCB, but I don't think it's printed. The belt is in great condition. There's the motor. There's the pulley. This thing looks very like serviceable, very simple design. I like it. Yeah, just a big empty wood box. So interesting stuff. Basically, I think I just need to connect that speaker and we'll be good. Okay guys, so I do have some speaker wire, but I can't find it right now. So I took an unneeded RCA and I just uh, clipped the ends off and then stripped it down. I think I'm probably gonna use, I'm gonna twist the insulation cable or the insulation copper um, and probably use that because the inside the uh, plastic insulation is just a single element. So I think I'd rather have multiple strands. So anyway, yeah, I'm just gonna jerry-rig this together and hope for the best. So as you can see, all I did was take the copper, separate it out like this, and then twist it. And that's what I'm gonna actually use to conduct the signal. So I'm gonna clip off the internal piece like that, and I'm just gonna twist it on to the terminal of the speaker because I don't have a uh, soldering iron right now. At least not one that's not in storage, so. Yeah, that should do the trick. I know it's not ideal, but it should get the job done. Okay, I figured it out. It was this bundle, and it was tucked up under there. That would make more sense, it was coming off the circuit board, so. Can't show you with uh, one hand holding the camera, but that was it. So I'm gonna connect it. Speaker's good. The kid that stabbed the hole apparently didn't go all the way through, so that's good. Okay, so. That's what went into it, and I feel really dumb about that cable, because literally the, that bundled up cable could have plugged right onto the speaker. But anyway, uh, it's water under the bridge, it'll work. So <laughs> that's the main point, is it works, and that's perfect. You know, $12 and we've got a pretty unique unit here. So let's take a closer look. It's got a tone control, volume knob, mic input, aux input. I haven't tested those yet. Some really good industrial looking literature operating instructions. And again, like I said the other day, East Middle School etched all over this thing to prevent electric shock. Uh, the transport controls, you got piano keys here. Everything's got a good click. Very good snap to it. It's got an interesting little pause switch right there. And that's really all there is to it. It's got a mechanical counter. And down here in the bottom left, we do have an external speaker, 8 ohm speaker connection, as well as a quarter inch headphone jack, the power on and off switch. And we also have a monitor switch located right in the middle and a PA address button as well. For something like this, you need some kind of kids media. So we're gonna listen to nothing boring today at all. We're going to listen to the Lunar Invaders Justice League of America. Especially interesting when it's in focus. And I love how the label's upside down. Although ironically, we don't need it to be upside down, at least not from this perspective. So let's give it a little listen. Hopefully we won't trigger any copyright garbage. Let's just hopefully be able to listen to some audio. Plug it, turn it on. I'm still learning this thing. Okay, are we working? Okay, cool. I hear a I hear the sound of tape moving. It's not though. <laughs> what on earth? Okay. Why is it not working? It, it may or may not have taken me about five minutes to realize it was just on pause. So I hear a good encouraging hum. Without further ado, let's go ahead and play this tape. <laughs> By the way, the sound, the volume is truly amazing. The Justice League of America. I've literally got it at like 10%. began their daily work. Great tractor crawlers roared like lions as they rode through the great space dome and out across the moon's rocky surface. Laser drills made the ground tremble as they dug deep holes into solid rock. The astronauts on Moonbase Peace had come from almost every country on Earth. 
That is a bizarre pause switch, but it's effective. It fooled me for about five minutes. We all work together to show that there could be lasting peace. Yeah, that's cool. Interesting. I love the bright yellow because, uh-oh, it's eating some tape. And you know, that's actually something I've, oops, it really did. Yeah, it ate some tape. Something I've read about, about these is they're kind of known for doing that. So, again, I need to kind of oil and lube things and clean things a bit still. Um, I'm a little nervous to put this one in. So this is a really cool tape, The Civil War by Ken Burns, a famous documentary. So the book that went with it, they did a text only book. And then from that, they did this awesome audio book. I had this when I was a lot younger, found it in a thrift store. I think I put it on the show maybe a year or so ago. And it kind of reignited my interest in the American Civil War. It's good stuff, really good stuff. So let's listen to a little bit of that. Hopefully won't eat this tape. Sherman covered the body of his young friend with an American flag and wept. But Sherman, General Jacob D. Cox remembered, had the rare faculty of remaining calm under great responsibilities and scenes of great excitement. At such times, his eccentricities disappeared. His mind seemed never so... So, dang it, it ate it again. So yeah, I'm gonna have to work on that. So this is a uh, work in progress. So take up reel, uh, spindle maybe a little slower than the uh, pinch roller is being driven. What's interesting though about this is when I was under the hood, there was two belts and they both seemed to be in really good shape. Everything was. I mean, as you saw, it was really, really clean. So anyway, this is a work in progress. We're going to do more with it. We're going to do some test recordings. Haven't got that far yet. So we want to plug in a microphone, see how it works. But I thought I'd give you guys this sort of initial look at the AB2000. So far, I'm happy with it. I think it's cool. You know, and to me, it's not about, you know, make it has to work perfectly. It has to be in perfect condition. You know, for me, it's an interesting device. It's, you know, something, it's big enough and, you know, clumsy enough that even I can work on it, which is nice. I'm always interested in unique and interesting electronics and records for that matter. So this definitely fits the bill. And for 12 bucks, you know, I feel like it was a good investment because we're definitely gonna get $12 worth of enjoyment and education out of it, we'll learn more about it. Again, I do think it was made by Sharp because Everything under the hood is branded as sharp as well, but overall super happy with it. Definitely want to uh, check out why that mechanism is eating tape there, but I think that that's a very doable, fixable thing. And again, excited to see, you know, what we can do in terms of, you know, recording, which will be cool. At the end of the day, I'm really glad that we were able to get it working. And so there you go. You never know when you're buying from a thrift store. Some people say never buy from a thrift store because you never know. But there's a, there's a risk and reward. You know, if, if I spent like more than this probably on something and it didn't work, I would just take back, get my money back. You know what I mean? And save it till I found something else. Okay, with a little bit of a teaser. Tomorrow, we're gonna take a look at the other tape deck that I got yesterday. That's this guy right here, which is another story. <laughs> Does this one work? Does it not work? And let's give it a nice tour. And if we get it, list, if we get it working, let's give it a listen and see you know, how it sounds if we get that far. But this has been a separate, interesting story. You're not going to want to miss it. So definitely tune in tomorrow. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.